The Mongols are an aggressive, nomadic civilization in AoE4. They are able to build their bases and move them when required. This civilization has early access to cavalry units and is extremely mobile. The Mongols in the game are represented through the ages 1000 to 1500 CE. The Mongol Empire of the 13th and 14th centuries was the largest contiguous land empire in history, stretching from Korea to Ukraine and Siberia to southern China. The Mongols were an ethnographic group of peoples who lived nomadic, mainly on the Mongolian plateau. The Mongol Empire itself was founded by Genghis Khan in 1206. But before that, Chinese historical records mention a confederation occupying eastern Mongolia and Manchuria. The Great Wall of China was reportedly built to help protect against them, who were also known for their violence, brutal war manners and their main weapon, fear. Ah! The Mongols changed the curse of history of the places that they conquered, plundered and invaded. This civilization is very complex and has a ginormous history. So you might want to get some popcorn or some coffee for this one. Let's do this! For centuries, the Eurasian steppes have been home to various scattered Mongol and Turkic nomad groups led by Khans. In the game, the Khan is a horse archer that has a broad line of sight, like the scout. It can regenerate its HP and has the signal arrow and the scouting falcon abilities. The signal arrow buffs the units nearby, increasing either their movement speed, attack speed or armor. The scouting falcon ability releases a falcon that provides vision in the area for 30 seconds. The Mongolian ancient falconry has been practiced for more than 6,000 years. Genghis Khan, for example, had thousands of hunting birds. Eagle hunters until this day use these birds when hunting, like wolves and foxes. The Mongols lived in circular tents called gear, that acted as temporary homes and were flexible enough to fold and pack, and light enough for nomads to carry. For nomadic people, water and riverbanks are not the most valuable resource. Their herd is the source of their food, clothing, building material, housing and even alcohol, the kumis. It's all made of animal products. These people herded sheep, camels, cattle and yaks and moved between campsites to provide the herds with grassy lands. And because of that, these nomadic people were always on the move. At the time, they even lacked a word for country. In a game, you don't have to build houses for Mongols and you start with one gear. This makes sense as the girls were where they lived and they stored their goods. In the game, Mongols receive resources from destroying and igniting enemy buildings. This mechanic is inspired by the fact that the Mongols deeply relied on raids. Their expansion to the west was propelled by raiding and trade. That is because the more west you go, the greener the lands, and that means more agriculture, more animals and more valuables. All of this they would then use to trade with other civilizations. For example, the Chinese were their best customers for horses. In these civilizations, these customers probably would be then invaded again and the Mongols would get everything back. But in essence, raiding was an essential part of Mongols economy, if you can even call it that. And the Silk Road, of course, was one of the main ways for trade and transportation throughout the continent. The Silk Road was a complex network of trade routes driven by checkpoints called Yam. These checkpoints provided food, shelter and spare horses for traders and messengers. This system was so effective that messengers could cover 200 to 300 kilometers a day 
on horseback. That's insane! In the game, outposts act as these checkpoints, increasing cavalry and traders' movement speed by 15%. And starting in the Castle Age, the Yam network can be researched at any outpost, which grants the bonus to all friendly units instead. The Mongols professed shamanism and their great deity was the sky. As shamanists, they had no church, nor had they need for one. Since worship was a matter of communication between the individual and the nature, they worshipped the spirits inhabiting the moon, sun, stars and all natural things. Ovos were used to worship these spirits. Ovo means Pio in Mongolian and they were generally built with stones, but their shape and materials depend partly on the regional traditions. Some of us also have a special altar and passerbys will add something of their choice to the ovo. The kadag is a strip of silk used in Tibet as a symbolic gift and offering found on site. Light blue kadags are normally preferred, symbolizing the heaven, but they can be found in five other colors as well. And this refers to the Chinese symbolism of the five elements, and that's how the ovo is represented in the game. Very colorful! And in the game you place ovos on top of stone mines to gather stone over time. Nomadic women held significant authority, managing migrations and flocks and trade. Meanwhile, men specialized in mounted warfare. These nomadic groups would often fight each other and steal from each other. A man named Temujin was to change that. Temujin was born around 1162 into the family of a tribal leader and quickly rose to power by forging strategic alliances with other tribes leaders. Unlike these other leaders, Temujin promoted soldiers based on merit and distributed the spoils evenly among them. Temujin was first elevated to Genghis Khan in 1189 by his tribe and confirmed by all Mongols in 1206. That is the beginning of the Mongol Empire, and I believe that this marks a transition from Dark Ages to Feudal Age in AoE4. And to go to the Feudal Age, you can build the Deer Stones or the Silver Tree. The Deer Stones is a military landmark that provides the Yam Speed Aura to friendly units, increasing their movement speed by 15% and researches the Yam Network technology. This landmark is based on the Deer Stone, which was mysterious ancient monoliths found all over Mongolia. The name comes from the carved depictions of flying deers. As these deer images also appear in warrior statues, it's possible that the reindeer were believed to offer some kind of protection against dangerous forces. The silver tree is an economic landmark that acts as a market that produces traders 50% faster and at a 50% reduced gold cost. Its real-life counterpart is the silver tree of Karakorum. During the 13th century, Karakorum was founded by Genghis Khan as the capital of the Mongol Empire and was one of the most important cities in the world. The land around Karakorum is not the most fertile, but Genghis Khan chose this location because it was located strategically at an intersection of the Silk Road. The silver tree was built in 1254 by a Parisian artisan. The branches, leaves and fruits were made of solid silver and from its pipes flowed wine, airag, a type of milk drink, honey drink and beer. The silver tree was a masterpiece of art, design and technological innovation. Once in feudal age, you also get access to the mango dai, a light ranged cavalry unit unique to the Mongols. They are fast and can shoot arrows on the move. The real mango dai are described as suicide troops. These horsemen would charge the enemies and fall back. The enemies then would pursue them, just to be greeted by an ambush of waiting archers and heavy cavalry. And you would be surprised how often this tactic of false retreat 
worked. To go to the cassowage, you can build the Kurutai or the Steppe Redoubt. The Kurutai is a military landmark that heals nearby units by 1 HP per second and provides a 20% damage bonus. In real life, a Kurutai or Kuryutai is an assembly of Mongolian clans, like a tribal council. Genghis Khan was declared Khan by the Kurutai of 1206, and most of the major military campaigns were first planned in assemblies like this. The landmark's shape resembles the seats in a parliament building. The Step Redoubt is an economic landmark that acts as a gear and gold dropped off is increased by 50%. This landmark is based on the walls of Karakoto City. Karakoto or Black City in Mongolian was conquered by Genghis Khan in 1226 and became a thriving trade hub. The city expanded three times its original size and was even mentioned by Marco Polo. A redoubt or a redoubt is a fort or a fort system, usually relying on earthworks or manipulation, something we can clearly see on the walls of Karakoto and on the landmark. Now to go to the imperial age, you can build the white stupa or the Kaganate palace. The white stupa acts as an ovo producing 240 stone per minute without the stone deposit. The white stupa real-life counterpart is the golden stupa of Edena II monastery. This monastery is probably the earliest surviving Buddhist monasteries in Mongolia. What's interesting about this choice, though, is that it was ordered to be built only in 1585. Its design attempts to create a surrounding wall that resembles a Buddhist rosary with 108 stupas. 108 is a sacred number in Buddhism, but this objective was never achieved. In any case, it was destroyed, dismantled and rebuilt, and by 1872 it had 62 temples and housed 1,000 monks. And finally, the Kaganate Palace. This is a military landmark that creates random groups of units from across the Mongol Empire and its dominions, including from the Rus, China and Mongols. Under Genghis Khan, the Mongols controlled lands from the northern China to the eastern Islamic lands and after his death in 1227, his sons and daughters conquered the Turks in Central Asia and the Rus princes. By 1279, their lands went as far as southern China and Baghdad. For example, in China, Kublai Khan's Yuan dynasty, represented by the Chinese castle age in Age of Empires IV, is remembered as a golden age for science and culture. And in Eastern Europe, the Golden Horde ruled for years, until a trading post named Muscovy grew into a major world power. As for its real-life counterpart, it is the Kambalik, or the winter capital of the Yuan dynasty in what is now Beijing, the capital of China. In simple words, the city was a garden. 12,000 men worked on building the new capital city, which in the early 15th century served as the building foundation of the Forbidden City. The Mongol wonder called Monument of the Great Khan is based on the equestrian statue of Genghis Khan, a 40 meter tall stainless steel statue of Genghis Khan on horseback and the world's tallest equestrian statue. Visitors can take a lift and walk to the head of the horse where they have a panoramic view. The statue faces towards his birthplace and is located where, according to legends, he found a golden whip. The legend states that when he found this golden whip, Genghis thought or felt like this was a message from the gods, motivating him to achieve his goal of becoming the leader of all the Mongol tribes. Unfortunately, this golden whip detail wasn't included in the wonder in the game. And another important point and kind of curious, this monument was erected in 2008 yep not very historically accurate however understandable as most of the mongols 
um, palaces and monuments have long been destroyed or forgotten and abandoned. Few armies in history have a reputation as fearsome as those of the Mongol Empire. They were regarded as invincible, devastating their enemies and cities. Some even believed that the Mongol army was a punishment sent by heaven. And that's all I have on this civilization. I hope you guys enjoyed learning more about the Mongol facts that inspired the mechanics and gameplay in Age of Empires 4. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye!